hearing has been started. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I want to welcome everyone to the July ISO Red webinar. Uh, it's just right at the top of the hour. And so I'm going to give people just one more minute to join um, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, we'll go ahead now that a few more people have signed in and uh, we want to take advantage of the full hour we have ahead of us. Um, so officially welcome everyone to the July ISO Red webinar. Um, it's really our pleasure to have the opportunity uh, to present a series of speakers from Institut Gustave Roussy um, in Paris, France. Um, and uh, my name is Lindsay Morton. I'm in the radiation epidemiology branch at the National Cancer Institute. Um, and it's my privilege to have the opportunity to moderate this webinar because I'm part of the webinar working group of ISORED. Um, so for those of you who are on the call, if you uh, are not yet involved in ISORED, at some point I'll put a link to the website uh, in the chat. And if you're particularly interested in the webinar working group, I'll also put some contact information. Um, but we're really excited to host this next webinar in the series um, where our goal is to bring together radiation researchers from around the world to discuss studies of ionizing radiation effects in humans, considering both epi methods and, um, and dosimetry as well. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to kick off the first talk. Um, uh, and then what we'll do is uh, have short question and answer after each presentation. Feel free to put your uh, questions in the chat. Um, many thanks to Elisa for already putting the ISORED website uh, in the chat. That's really helpful. Um, and so we'll do Q&As. You can feel free to also uh, um, turn on your camera and ask questions that way during the Q&A. Uh, we are really grateful to have uh, AV support from the NCI team, and if you have any issues, as noted in the chat, you can go ahead and contact them directly uh, or send me a chat as well, because I'll be monitoring it. Uh, so to begin, as we've tried to begin each of these webinars uh, with an overview of the group activities, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Nez Jorni, who's a researcher in the Radiation Epidemiology Group at the Center for Epidemiology um, at Public Health and Population Health at Institute, Institute Gustave Roussy. Nez? Thank you, Lindsay. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, okay, uh, I will share my screen. Can you see it? Looks great, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. So I'm happy to have the opportunity to give a quick overview of our uh, activities at the Radiation Epidemiology Group at INSEM, Gustave Rossi. So we, we all, uh, our group is part of the Center for Research in Epidemiology and Population Health, which is an INSEM um, research unit, uh, which is a multidisciplinary uh, research unit in public health. And uh, we are also affiliated to Paris Saclay University and Gustave Roussy. So we are a group of epidemiologists, uh, medical doctors, biostatisticians, data managers, project managers, clinical research assistants, and we have also a very nice uh, group of pre-doc fellows and uh, other students. We are located here at the Gustave Roussy Cancer um, Campus which is really a very good place for us to be because uh, we can work uh, in close relationships with the clinicians at Gustave Roussy and also with uh, many research groups, in particular in biology and physics. So our research areas are mainly um, uh, focused mainly on effects on 
of low dose exposure to ionizing radiation, um, cancer survivorships, in particular late effects of radiation therapy and chemotherapy, and also thyroid and breast uh, cancer etiology. We have also uh, cross-sectional research activities in radiation dosimetry, biological and imaging markers, and uh, modeling uh, big data and data sciences. Um, we have set up several cohorts and case study uh, case controlled studies, most of them including a collection of blood and or saliva samples and the individual wall body dosimetry based on computational uh, phantoms. Uh, in total for our um, populations cohorts, um, the, dosim the individual wall, wall body dosimetry uh, has been reconstructed for 12,000 individuals treated with radiation therapy. Uh, Probably the most important database for us um, in terms of number of projects and publication in the fresh is the French childhood cancer survivor studies, uh, which um, has just became an open data resource, meaning that the researchers from any institute can apply to access the core data and conduct their own research project based on those data. Um, um, which is interesting uh, is that uh, we can have access to um, healthcare system claims data for all um, French residents, uh, which is of course a powerful resource for epidemiology, long-term follow-up, and also to conduct medical economic studies. Uh, we're also involved in several European projects, included or not those cohorts, uh, and uh, our most recent um, European uh, EU-funded project is Harmonic, uh, which is coordinated by uh, ES Global and uh, in which we are in charge of the setting up and the maintenance of the central database for radiotherapy and research activities on second cancers. Mm, the most important part of our activities is dedicated to cancer survivorships, where we aim to contribute to improving radiation treatments, early detection of late sequelae, and long-term follow-ups of patients for preventing um, late effects of cancer treatments. We consider those late effects as multifactorial events and try to better characterize characterize the role of clinical lifestyle and therapeutic factors and their interactions. We also consider the late effects as um, multiple, multiple mor morbidities, at least for a part of the population of cancer patients, and uh, we are working to develop risk uh, stratification tools um, to improve uh, the follow-up for those patients. And last, we are investigating the burden and the impact of late effects for the patients and also for the healthcare system. Here are some examples of recent publications looking at the, the effect of clinical and therapeutic factors on the risk of second uh, CNS tumors, uh, small adult eight. Um, subsequent leukemia after childhood cancer. Uh, here, this is based on uh, international collaboration. And um, there are uh, two projects that we would like to share here uh, with you, current, um, current projects. The, the first one is this one. This is about um, the development of a global score for uh, iatrogenic uh, events. And um, in this current version of the of the, this global score for um, treatment and cancer related uh, events, um, uh, this current version includes sex, age at cancer diagnosis, a number of irradiated bo body areas, chemotherapy, and at an age, and it's currently under validation with um, external data, in particular the Swiss uh, CCS uh, cohort. Another um, project with, which uh, recently received um, funding from, from the French government is 
uh, this project, which aims to use uh, high dimensional computational modeling methods um, to develop risk prediction, um, risk prediction models. So our main funders are the French uh, government, Gustave Rossi, the European Commission and uh, non-governmental uh, organizations. So this is our contact uh, information. If you want to connect us for training and collaboration opportunities, uh, for the moment, um, the formal uh, process to apply to access to the uh, FCCSS data is not yet um, implemented, but will be by the end of this year. But in the meantime, you can contact uh, Florent de Vater and for and or any other uh, member of the of the team. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nash. That was a terrific overview. Uh, perhaps you can put the contact um, information in the chat uh, uh, as the webinar goes on so that people can okay. go ahead and click on these links. That would be great. Um, are there any questions for the group um, from the group for Nash? Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and dive right into the science then um, and uh, examples of some of the uh, research areas that you described in your overview, Nej. Uh, so with that, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Florent de Vater, the research director and head of the radiation epidemiology group uh, that Nej just described um, and representing kind of the broad spectrum of research that they have. He's going to be presenting on the role of French nuclear tests in the risk of differentiated thyroid cancer in French uh, Polynesia. So, Florent, over to you. Uh, hello, do you hear me? You're still a little bit quiet, at least for me. Uh, I will try to speak. Uh, I, okay. I uh, thank very much uh, for uh, this opportunity, Lindsay. I will present an uh, overview of a job uh, which has started uh, more than 25 ago, years ago on which is a collaboration uh, between uh, INSEM uh, at the beginning IISN but uh, no longer now and uh, NCI and uh, uh, obviously uh, French Polynesian. In, French, uh, donc, the fr nuclear tests performed uh, by France uh, uh, were performed in Mururoa and Fagatofa, which are two atolls, which are at the west, at the sorry, east of uh, the French Polynesia, and uh, uh, which were, uh, in fact, uh, well, there were almost no permanent inhabitants uh, before uh, the test. And uh, there were less than 500 inhabitants in the circle of 500 kilometers around the nuclear test. Uh, the, on this map, you have the, the two nuclear test sites, and also you have Tahiti, uh, where live most of the, popul the population of French Polynesia. And uh, uh, what is important to know, uh, on it, because it's a key factor for uh, doing uh, studies is that at time of uh, test only three airports uh, exist in, uh, existed in uh, French Polynesia, Tahiti, Ao, which was the main logistic basis of uh, the test, and Moruroa. And except in Tahiti, Ao, and Moruroa, due to this situation, almost all the food uh, was produced locally in each island on atolls. Another uh, some the important uh, information to know is that uh, uh, there were uh, favorable conditions in order to carry out uh, uh, some uh, study in French Polynesia on the, this condition are listed here. And uh, it's, uh, uh, yes, on the, in particular, there, were, there was a cancer registry since 84 and a regular census of which for the one which are in bold, we obtain the individual census data. 
The, alors, another information is uh, that in French Polynesia, the frequency of obesity and the number of high number of pregnancy, which are strong risk factor for differentiated thyroid carcinoma, are, uh, is important. We firstly obtained in 94 uh, the data from the, uh, the registry of cause of death. That permit us to publish a first paper in 1995, which, in which we showed that at least in women, thyroid cancer mortality was higher in French Polynesia than in the other Maori population of Hawaii and New Zealand. This paper was based only on 14 cases, but it permit us to obtain the cancer registry data. The quality of the cancer registry data was extremely low. And that's why we spent three years to improve the quality of the cancer registry by examining thousands of clinical and pathological records. And lastly, we added uh, about 540 new cases to the cancer registry, and uh, we eliminated uh, at least 100 of the bloods. This permits us to show that thyroid cancer incidence was higher in French Polynesia than in other Maori population, um, and that uh, in French Polynesia, this incidence was higher in natives than in immigrants. We also shown that this excess of uh, incidence in French Polynesia compared to the to what observed in other Maori population uh, was not higher in uh, the people born during the test, during the nuclear test, than in the people born after the nuclear test. And uh, that was, uh, this result was against the hypothesis of a very strong role or strong role of nuclear tests in this excess of thyroid cancer incidence in French Polynesia. Alors, following this result, we decided to perform uh, another study, or more detailed studies. We uh, did not perform cost study because, uh, uh, in fact, the excess, uh, the expected excess of the dose of uh, thyroid cancer, as we know uh, from uh, some information about of dose, uh, was low, and that's why it would be too much complicated to adjust for those risk factors. Uh, we perform a uh, case control study, including to 225 cases and 371 uh, controls. And uh, the um, yes, and uh, we perform face-to-face -face interview, which concern both uh, known thyroid cancer risk factors and attempts playing a role in those reconstruction. With, we also collected nails and saliva. The dosimetry was performed by uh, uh, Vladimir Drozdovich, which was at this time in IAC, in IAC and, uh, which is now in uh, NCI. And uh, it's taken into account uh, cell questionnaire data, age, case of residence, type of habitation, diet and the source of drinking water, which is a very important issue. And the um, and also this uh, the first crisis dose estimation was based on the report sent by France to the UNSCAR. And uh, during this period, on this this report included data on total beta activity in air, iodine 131 in co milk on beta minus on gamma activity in some food, and also total activity in bone deposition, bone deposition. We also use uh, meteorological data, but uh, the main limitation of this uh, first uh, dose estimation was the fact that the report sent by France to UNSCAR include only limited data, on, which was sometimes smoothed. With this data, we uh, perform a case control analysis, a classical case control analysis, and evidenced 
avait la nef plus significante en relation between thyroid dose, we see before the age of, of 15, and nothing for the, the one we see after the world, and the risk of thyroid cancer, and uh, this uh, relationship was confirmed when excluding microcarcinoma, uh, which in their control, and as you know, microcarcinoma are much more uh, susceptible to be uh, to be due or need to screening. Uh, all these uh, uh, calculations were adjusted on ethnical group, classification, body surface, family history, number of pregnancy uh, for women. Uh, in this study, we also showed that uh, almost, than in women, almost all the excess of thyroid cancer incidence was concentrated uh, in the woman who had four and more pregnancy uh, after being exposed uh, when uh, having less than 14 than uh, 15 years. The interaction with age with, with the number of pregnancy was uh, near from was just significant P equal zero point zero three. Hello. In fact, <coughs> uh, following this paper and following uh, my recurrent asking uh, to uh, Maurice Tubena, who was uh, uh, who play a role, important role uh, in the French Academy of Science and French Academy to Medicine, uh, I, uh, I asked him to ask to the army to declassify the records, uh, to declassify the the part of radiation protection. Uh, service of uh, French Army and OCA, and in fact, uh, in 2013, uh, the uh, reports were declassified. That's why when there went a new, an extension of the, of uh, the case control study on a new dosimetry. The, due to the fact that uh, this extension take place, uh, took place uh, after the first, the people included, the thyroid cancer case included, were older and older, in fact, uh, uh, was a time of diagnosis and uh, older uh, time of uh, test. The, on, the right, on the right side, we have the, the place of, resi the, of uh, main residence of case and control include in the uh, study. Now, the new dosimetry was performed by uh, Dr. Bouville and, uh, and uh, Dr. Drozdovich from NCI. And uh, <coughs> they, uh, they, this uh, dosimetry used the, all the document uh, and data used in the initial study, but also the declassified uh, the report. And uh, it was decided to, uh, to, in order to um, uh, to improve the dosimetry and given the problem of recall bias, uh, of which is evident in all this type of study, to perform focus group study, uh, which was performed on focus group was performed were performed in all of French Polynesia archipelago, and included the informant key informant interview. Now, using data from the classified uh, French Army report, uh, and, uh, which concerns a ground position for 33 patterns radiological radionuclei uh, from uh, 41 nuclear tests, uh, uh, we perform, uh, uh, the ground deposition was performed in uh, the 49 Iceland and Atoll where study subject uh, resided in uh, between uh, during the period of test. It was uh, shown on the previous slide. Uh, the graph of uh, the right, uh, the slide uh, show the ground deposition in, uh, <coughs> in the vertical axis, it's the ground deposition in the new, um, sorry, in the, um, according to the, the declassified report. 
vertical axis and in horizontal axis uh, according to the, um, uh, the the previous data from the MSCA reports. And this is for each ASEAN, and as you can show, the ground deposition are higher in the, with the new uh, document, the classified document. The target dose estimates were performed uh, uh, the three exposure pathways were uh, considered in take from uh, four meters in take of uh, so, uh, 31 on thermal the top from inhalation and ingestion of four meters uh, leafy vegetables and uh, <laughs> drinking water so, and uh, external irradiation and uh, ingestion of long term uh, cesium, uh, radioactive cesium in a food. So. And uh, as a consequence of what seen previously, you can show on this slide the estimate of thyroid dose using the new uh, dosimetry in vertical axis on the one using the uh, previous. Uh, <coughs> the previous uh, dosimetry, uh, this is obviously only for the, the people who were both in, in the first uh, study. And the dose are higher in the uh, first, uh, in, uh, as a consequence of what shown before, the dose are higher, uh, waste, the estimation of dose are higher uh, in the new dosimetry. Alors, for now, what are the results? The results are not uh, still published because I want to include uh, also in the paper an estimation of uh, a prediction of the number of thyroid cancer due to uh, uh, French nuclear test. Uh, what we can do because we have uh, uh, the individual data of census at, uh, 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 at six at the year 60, 71 and 77, and we'll do uh, uh, project, this projection. But the results now are the following, and in fact, as expected, the risks are lower. Okay? And in fact, we have strong problem of instability, and uh, the relation, uh, the trend is not significant uh, when uh, considering the whole case control study. And whatever the model goes, and when uh, excluding microcarcinoma, the trend uh, is just significant, but the magnitude of the excess uh, depends strongly of the methodology. Right. We have, it's my last slide, sorry. Right. What we have uh, still to do is to perform thyroid cancer expedition. All cancer expedition with uh, this paper helps only with. Uh, <coughs> with uh, Vladimir, and uh, uh, we are waiting for analysis on MIRNA exhibition of CEA, and we have some other projects which are listed here, but uh, for which we do not have the funds now. Thanks for your attention, and please, uh, <laughs> no too difficult question. <laughs> Thank you, Florent. Those were very um, interesting results that you shared. Uh, Mark Little has already put a talk, a uh, uh, comment in the chat, which is an excellent talk, Florent. Um, has there been a power calculation for this study, um, both for thyroid cancer or for other cancer sites? Is it what? Sorry, sorry, I did not understand. So, excuse me, could you repeat? Have you run power calculations to estimate the statistical power given no, the doses that you have? No, I, w I would prefer to do a risk projection or risk estimation because, in fact, the, uh, say, the power is limited by the, the number of thyroid cancer. We have included in the first study, I am sure, more than 90% of the alive case, uh, thyroid cancer cases in French Polynesia and about of 80 the second. And that's why uh, we... Uh, uh, yes, the, uh, the power is defined by this limitation, um, but we cannot over, uh, go over this uh, limitation of the number of 
that's okay. It's mm -hmm. because uh, it's a small population. Marianne Asner uh, commented, it's a fascinating and important study. Has there been any change in screening for thyroid cancer due to increased awareness? And if so, did you account for that? Uh, hello. Uh, there is a strong role of uh, screening in, in French Polynesia. And I think that uh, the first result I published was due to that. And in fact, uh, it was particularly high uh, from uh, uh, 97 to uh, 2003. There was some uh, ethical problem with this because it was extremely important and some uh, medical doctor had uh, a problem with the ethical committee because of their uh, tendency uh, to extract all thyroid of most of women in French Polynesia. But uh, the, on the, up to now, in fact, uh, the only way for me to take this into account is to publish um, both the uh, whole uh, case control study and uh, the case control study excluding microcarcinoma. But I understand that it is not enough. So if other people have questions, if you could put them in the chat and Florent, perhaps you could respond just in the chat. Um, but we'll thank you again for your presentation um, and move on to the next one. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Monia Zidan, who's an early career scientist in the Radiation Epidemiology Group and is going to be presenting on genetic susceptibility to differentiated thyroid cancer after irradiation in childhood. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Lise, for this uh, presentation. Um, so I'm... Uh, can you see uh, uh, my screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy today to present you uh, two parts of my uh, PhD uh, research called Genetic Susceptibility to Differentiated uh, Thyroid Cancer After Irradiation During the Childhood. Uh, this work is supervised by Florent Vater and Jean-Baptiste Cazier from the University of Birmingham. Uh, so I will start by presenting the genetic factors of differentiated thyroid cancer in French Polynesian population after exposure to atmospheric nuclear weapons tests. This is the same uh, case control studies uh, presented by uh, Florent. Uh, so, we analyzed the data of uh, the genotyping data of uh, 283 cases and uh, 418 uh, controls, uh, all genotyped with the Illumina Encore chip. Um, our, our analysis uh, um, ha, 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 had uh, two parts. So the first was the ancestry uh, with the uh, principal component uh, analysis. Then she uh, uh, was with the uh, unconditional uh, logistic uh, regression uh, model. Uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, here on uh, your right is the uh, dose uh, response relationship in the genotyped uh, population. Um, this uh, uh, this uh, relationship is uh, near to a uh, near to a significance uh, threshold only when we exclude the micro uh, cancers from the analysis. Um, uh, to understand the structure of our population, we, ra we run the PCA uh, analysis. Uh, as you can see on the left of the uh, uh, screen, this is the result of uh, our PCA analysis on the French uh, Polynesian population, uh, presenting a strong uh, uh, structure for the, of this uh, population. So we run the same analysis with um, a reference uh, data set uh, called human origins. Uh, the particularity of this uh, uh, reference uh, data set uh, that uh, it's including an ancient uh, DNA, uh, Polynesian uh, DNA uh, samples of uh, individuals that before a, uh, 1850, so before the arrival of a uh, French colonizer. And uh, what uh, you can see here that uh, the, um, uh, the major et uh, ethnic uh, origin is the uh, ancient French uh, um, Polynesian with a mixture with uh, Han, Chinese and uh, French uh, Caucasian. Um, and the, the uh, what we can also uh, notice is that uh, the uh, modern uh, French Polynesian population is quite far from other uh, Oceanian um, uh, population like uh, uh, Jimmy and uh, Papua. So then uh, we run uh, GWAS on um, uh, including all cancer types. Uh, um, the Manhattan plot, uh, this Manhattan plot, 
uh, present uh, our uh, results from this uh, analysis. Uh, we have three origins of a signal on uh, uh, the best is uh, on chromosome 10, and the closest uh, gene is uh, P4K2A. And uh, on chromosome 6, uh, the closest uh, genes were uh, GRM1 and uh, RAP32. And finally, on chromosome uh, 17, and all uh, the variant here you can. Uh, uh, in the signal uh, are uh, in uh, the uh, region of uh, SCAP1 gene. Uh, so then we run the same uh, uh, analysis uh, uh, separately on carcinoma larger than 10 millimeters um, in the upper uh, side. And um, the uh, signal in, chrom uh, in chromosome 10 disappear. We have only the signal chromosome 6 and uh, 17. And um, uh, uh, when we run the same analysis, uh, including only carcinoma uh, smaller than 10 millimeters, uh, the uh, signal in chromosome 6 uh, disappear, and we have only the signal in chromosome 10 and uh, 17. Um, um, uh, to, we can't, uh, we need uh, to uh, uh, replicate or biologically validate our results of uh, uh, associations uh, because uh, none of uh, these uh, results uh, uh, had, uh, had, uh, had been uh, previously associated with uh, thyroid cancer risk. Uh, and um, of, uh, and we are working on very low doses, so we have low power of our interaction tests. Uh, our ancestry analysis identified three major ancestral ethnicities, but we still did not uh, explore uh, the relation between uh, these uh, different uh, ethnicities and other factors like uh, uh, dietary uh, habits or, or um, uh, the exposure to metal uh, pollutants, and uh, especially uh, because we have all this data in uh, this uh, uh, case control um, study. So it's all about uh, French uh, Polynesia. And now I will present you uh, the second part, which is the role of uh, DNA repair variants and diagnostic radiology uh, exams in differentiated thyroid cancer risk. This is a, a recently published uh, um, paper. Um, um, uh, th there are an increasing questioning of the risks uh, associated with multiple low doses uh, exposures, uh, inclu including uh, thyroid cancer risk, uh, especially with the increasing use of radio diagnostic uh, examinations. Um, uh, only one case control study has examined the interaction between genetic factors and radiation exposure from uh, diagnostic uh, X-ray uh, examinations, uh, which is uh, the paper of Sandler and um, all uh, published in 2018. So uh, the objective of uh, our study is uh, to analyze the ro role of uh, SNPs in DNA repair genes, uh, uh, DNA repair genes, and uh, in uh, DTC risk after uh, childhood uh, exposure to um, uh, radio diagnostic uh, um, examinations. Um, so we uh, use the data of two case control uh, study, uh, uh, CATI, uh, performed in the north of uh, France, and uh, Young Tire, uh, performed in the um, uh, West regions of uh, France, uh, all of them genotyped with uh, Illumina Encore bedsheet. Um, only uh, uh, subjects of uh, European uh, ancestry were included, and we analyzed uh, all SNPs in uh, 571 genes in DNA damage signaling and repair pathways. Um, we used a logistic uh, regression model um, and uh, two steps of uh, the an analysis. The first was to uh, test all uh, the available dat data in uh, young tire, then to select the best 100 uh, SNPs to uh, test them in uh, CATI, then uh, to metalize uh, both uh, um, studies. Uh, to assess uh, uh, the thyroid dose, uh, we were based on uh, data from questionnaires uh, and uh, literature data. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and the available literature data by type uh, of uh, uh, um, 
examination. Uh, we tried to perform a validation uh, of the declared exams in uh, young tire, uh, and we uh, noticed that uh, there are almost no uh, difference between uh, 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 the declaration from the questionnaires and uh, what uh, we uh, we received uh, as a response of the uh, 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 of the validation. Um, then we classed each exam by calendar uh, period uh, to take into account the different uh, um, technologies. And finally, we used only one uh, threshold age of exposure uh, because uh, of the lack of uh, published data, uh, data especially about uh, um, uh, uh, exposure during, uh, um, during um, childhood. Uh, so, um, uh, the mean uh, dose, a thyroid dose uh, among the cases during uh, childhood was of uh, 2.8, and uh, among uh, controls was uh, 1.9. Uh, um, and uh, uh, the graph, uh, the, uh, the, the plot uh, uh, on your uh, uh, on your left, I uh, present the uh, dose response uh, relationship uh, among the genotype uh, sample. And um, uh, this uh, relationship was uh, um, uh, significant only uh, for a childhood uh, thyroid uh, dose. Um, our two best variants uh, were in uh, CHD2 genes uh, uh, gene and NFAT C2. Um, uh, these two genes uh, are uh, known to be involved in uh, response to ionizing and uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation. Um, uh, and um, uh, also uh, 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 cells with uh, CHD2 mutations are, uh, uh, have a defective DNA repair uh, capacity. Uh, when we run model with uh, an interaction uh, 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 term, um, uh, uh, we have only one variant, uh, uh, one uh, uh, which is uh, interacting significantly with uh, the uh, thyroid dose. Uh, this variant is in NGMT gene. Uh, previous uh, uh, studies uh, reported uh, uh, an interaction between other variants uh, in this gene and the thyroid dose. Uh, this, uh, these studies of uh, Longjou and uh, Sandler. Um, but the reported uh, variants are not in linkage disequilibrium with the variant reported by our um, um, study. Uh, the last thing to uh, um, to notice is that uh, our uh, uh, this um, variant is uh, in in interaction also with the tobacco in our um, uh, study. Uh, the major uh, limitation of uh, this study is the recall uh, um, recall bias. Uh, besides, we have uh, uh, we are working on very low uh, dose, and so we have very low power for interaction uh, tests. Um, uh, and uh, again, uh, our uh, significant uh, result uh, uh, need to be uh, uh, biologically evidenced or um, um, replicated. So, thank you very much. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Zidane. That was uh, very illuminating, and also it's it's helpful to hear you kind of talk through some different design approaches, and of course the major challenges with doing this research with small sample sizes. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a few questions in the chat. Um, one also illustrating the complexity. Uh, uh, have you? Checked into if some of your risk loci on chromosome 10 or 17 are also linked to body mass index um, and could confer an indirect risk for thyroid cancer. Uh, actually, I didn't check for this. Uh, I uh, I performed uh, here. I did not present it, uh, it but I performed um, uh, um, regional amputation 
uh, on these uh, regions to see if uh, we can have uh, uh, more testing uh, uh, variants. Uh, uh, but uh, also uh, this step uh, didn't um, uh, didn't show any uh, uh, other particular uh, um, um, results. But yes, it it may be uh, interesting to uh, perform such. Uh, and there, there are some other um, some technical questions in the chat that you might be able to answer just by typing, but I thought it would be okay. useful for perhaps everyone to hear. Um, one of the questions was um, that what kind of genetic model, you know, dominant recessive um, additive did you uh, use for the SNPs that were showing a significant odds ratio? Uh, it was a additive model of uh, inheritance. Additive. Um, and did you try and address inherited cancer predisposition syndromes um, like DICER-1 that's relevant for thyroid cancer? Sorry, I didn't catch you. Did you, um, did you consider cancer predisposition syndromes like DICER-1? Uh, uh, actually, we, uh, we don't have this uh, data. Uh, if uh, we don't have this data, uh, if uh, uh, some of our uh, Subjects uh, has uh, has any syndrome, uh, uh, any uh, predisposition uh, syndrome. Okay, thank you so much. And again, if the discussion in the chat is great, and so if you could respond a little bit to that, but really delighted to uh, introduce the final speaker in the series. Um, one of the things we've tried to do throughout these webinars is to showcase uh, research being conducted by individuals at all stages of their career. Uh, so it's a particular pleasure to introduce uh, T. Ventran Tran, who's a PhD student in the Radiation Epidemiology Group, and who's going to be presenting on breast cancer risk among female thyroid cancer survivors and the role of radioactive iodine. Thank you, Lindsay, for the introduction. And I hope that you can hear me well and see my screen now. Yes. If you just make it on slideshow. Yep, perfect. Yes. Looks great. Okay, so today is my pleasure to present to you a study that I am working on with my advisors. This work focuses on radioactive iodine and breast cancer risk among female thyroid cancer survivors. Uh, let me is uh, let me start by explaining why we were interested in this topic. As you may have already known, that thyroid cancer has an increasing incidence in the recent decades, especially in women, and this may not be explained by overdiagnosis alone. In general, thyroid cancer is treatable, and in many cases, it can be cured completely. Also, it, although it may come back after treatment, uh, treatments for thyroid cancer include uh, thyroidectomy with or without radioactive iodine. And for patients with relapse, they can be treated with radioactive iodine, external beam radiation therapy, and surgery. Actually, there are a lot of uh, concerns over the long-term outcomes in thyroid cancer survivors, one of which is breast cancer risk. Indeed, a previous studies have suggested that thyroid cancer survivors had a higher rate of breast cancer compared to what is expected in the general population, and causes for these higher rates remain unknown. It could be due to surveillance bias, genetics, or shared risk factors. It could be due to radioactive iodine too, given that breast is a radiosensitive organ and such an association has been suggested in ecological studies. However, uh, to now we have conflicting results on the effect of medical radioactive iodine and breast cancer risk. Uh, moreover, previous studies also had major limitations such as a short follow-up time, insufficient latency time, and no details on radioactive iodine, which may underestimate re the risk related to radioactive iodine. And in a study in 2003, we reported a higher rate of breast cancer uh, among thyroid cancer survivors in a pruned uh, cohort. So in the current study, we aimed first to update the incidence rate of breast cancer in our pruned cohort, and second, to investigate uh, the potential role of radioactive iodine on breast cancer risk among female thyroid cancer survivors. Briefly, our point cohort are uh, composed of three major populations in France, in Italy, and in Sweden. Uh, 
these populations included patients diagnosed with or treated for thyroid cancer as the first primary cancer. And after exclusions, we included uh, 8,475 women in our final analysis. We retrieved medical records for detailed information on thyroid cancer diagnosis and treatment modalities, including uh, radioactive iodine administration to uh, identify subsequent cancer and death we used medical records for the French and Italian cohort and cancer and death registries for the Swedish cohort. We, uh, during the follow-up time, we censored patients at the date of second cancer diagnosis, death, last visit, and censoring date of each cohort. We also conducted a dosimetry to estimate the doses to the breast from radioactive iodine and external, external radiotherapy in this study. Concerning stati statistical analysis, we used Python models to compute standardized incidence rate, and we considered uh, the rate from general, the general population as our reference rate Therapeutic radioactive iodine and external radiotherapy were considered as time-dependent variables with a 10-year latency time. We also evaluated the shape of those response models for therapeutic radioactive iodine, and we found no departure from linearity, so we used a linear model for our final analysis because uh, several factors could have an impact on the association between radioactive iodine and breast cancer risk, such as external radiotherapy, age and year thyroid cancer diagnosis, follow-up time, and radioactive iodine administration modalities. We tested uh, the modifying effects of these factors. We also conducted uh, several sensitivity analysis, uh, included uh, an analysis in which we used uh, estimated cumulative absorbed doses of radioactive iodine instead of cumulative activity. So let's move on the session for the result of our analysis. In our PUN cohort, the mean age at thyroid cancer diagnosis was uh, 45 years, and only 11% of women received uh, external radiotherapy why up to 62% of patients were treated with therapeutic radioactive iodine. And uh, in general, uh, radioactive iodine treated patients, they received a cumulative activity, uh, um, a median cumulative activity of 100 millicuri, which were equivalent to 247 milligray. And the doses to the breast from external radiotherapy were estimated at 566 milligray during a median follow-up time of nearly 13 years. 335 women developed a breast cancer. As you can see here, that in our point cohort, thyroid cancer survivors had a 1.5 times higher rate of breast cancer compared to what is expected in the general population. And uh, this higher rate did not vary according to countries, but it decreased with uh, increasing age at thyroid cancer diagnosis and increased with increasing age at thyroid cancer diagnosis and follow-up time. When we considered uh, patients with radioactive iodine as a whole, we did not find any significant association, any significant increased risk uh, compared to patients without radioactive iodine. However, we did find a significant dose response relationship between cumulative activity of radioactive iodine and breast cancer with a significant excess relative risk of 17% uh, 17, 17 per 100 millicuri, which uh, was equivalent to 7% of 100, 7% per 100 milligray, and the highest risk was found among women with at least 400 milligray, which could, uh, which be, uh, which were estimated to induce 42 cases of breast cancer uh, every 10,000 person years, and the results did not change in sensitivity and stratified analysis. 
previous studies also suggested that the way we treat uh, patients with radiation can have an impact on the subsequent breast cancer risk. So uh, here we uh, we did, we conducted an analysis on the administration modalities of radioactive iodine. But first of all, let's uh, recall a little bit the, the way we treat patients with radioactive iodine. Currently, the recommended uh, activity for a single administration of radioactive iodine is below 200 millicurie, and single activity is often indicated in case of remnant ablation and adjuvant treatments wide repeated activity is used for metastasis. And as we can see here, we always found a higher rate of breast cancer uh, compared to uh, women without radioactive iodine. Among women uh, with a high cumulative activity of radioactive iodine and uh, among women with a uh, maximum activity below 200 millicurie, we always observed a very similar trend of breast cancer risk. Our study uh, found uh, an excess relative risk, which is comparable with some, but not on other, uh, other studies in the literature. And indeed in the literature, the, the excess relative risk vary considerably and which we uh, could be explained by radiation sources, age at exposure, background risk, or dose estimate. One could also argue that uh, the high rates that we found in this study uh, is explained by surveillance bias or indication bias instead of the effect of radioactive iodine. But as you have seen that uh, our analysis on the number of uh, radioactive iodine administration that the risk um, of breast cancer did not vary according to, did not vary considerably according to number of uh, administrations. So it is unlikely that indication bias explained all of these higher rates. We also conducted uh, several sensitivity to uh, see to which extent that surveillance bias may explain uh, the the results of our study and it turned out that uh, patients with a higher cumulative activity of radioactive iodine they tended to be dropped out than others so it is likely that uh, the risk estimate among these population may be underestimated our study had major strengths including a large population a long follow-up time detailed information on radioactive iodine and external radiotherapy. Uh, we also um, had a, an internal comparison, which allowed us to reduce the uh, bias due to indication. However, uh, there are several limitations in this study, uh, such as we had limited number of cases among patients treated with radioactive iodine, and uh, we had no information on cancer states, grade, subtypes, or other common risk factors and genetics. And as uh, other observational study that uh, during the follow-up, uh, patients tend to be dropped out during the follow-up. In conclusion, that uh, in our study, our study suggested that thyroid cancer survivors may have a higher rate of breast cancer compared to the general population, and radioactive iodine might contribute to a long-term increased risk of breast cancer, especially among women with a very high cumulative activity. And our study suggests that maybe a uh, caution is needed when we consider uh, radioactive iodine for uh, treat as treatments for thyroid cancer survivors. And that's the end of my presentation, and I am looking forward for your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, T. Ventren, for a great talk. Um, very interesting results. Um, uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat, um, and I think uh, the two of them have kind of a similar feel, which has to do with um, both modification of the radiation dose response by age and exposure, um, 
or by uh, other hormonal factors. So can you talk a little bit about your analysis uh, accounting for these? Yeah, indeed, we would love to do to conduct analysis on the interaction between hormonal factors and radiation, but unfortunately that we don't have data on uh, these characteristics. So yeah, we cannot do more analysis on that. And what about age and exposure? Because you showed the higher SIRs for individuals diagnosed with thyroid cancer at younger ages, uh, but not the dose uh, response by age. For age at exposure, we indeed, uh, we did not find any association, any significant interaction with age at exposure. And the, the results remain very consistent in uh, sensitivity and stratifying analysis. Now, that'll be really interesting to understand more given all of the other data suggesting that there are age of exposure uh, yes. effects or you know, modifiers yes. of the dose response. Um, yes, indeed, uh, because the, in the literature, previous studies are suggested that age at exposure play a very, very important role in the effect of radiation on the subsequent breast cancer risk. So we tried to, to understand this more in our analysis. Well, thank you for your terrific presentation and for the great set of talks uh, from the whole group. Um, I put a comment in the chat. Um, Rania Kosti is the leader of the webinar working group of ISORED. Um, and so if you're interested in presenting in the webinar series, please send her an email. Her email address is listed. Um, we're going to be taking August off uh, to recognize the summer months in the Northern Hemisphere, um, but we'll be back in September. So please keep an eye out for additional webinar announcements uh, for this uh, this fall, um, and thank you all for participating. Thank you very much, the organizer. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Lindsay.